Hello student, I am a deputy ma'am. In the previous class, we have already discussed about the mechanism of breathing in the living organism, particularly in the human being. But today we are going to discuss about the respiration in the other organism other than the human being. Okay. So let's start our discussion with cockroach. So all of you know that cockroach is a uh, insects and they have some special type of structures that are involved in their respiration so what are they now see if we cut the body of the cockroach we can see that inside their body there is some whitish tube like structures now see these are whitish tube like structures now these structures are known as the trachea okay and these trachea are open into the each and every segment of their body through small openings now these small openings are known as the spiracles now see here this is the first segment of their abdomen so this is first abdominal spiracle okay so in that way we can get the spiracles in each and every body segment okay but what is the way through which the oxygen or carbon dioxide are passes through this trachea so let's see now see here this is the spiracle and this is the body wall now see here it's also the spiracle now this spiracle continues with the main trachea and this main trachea again branched and forms many tracheoles which are very narrow and these tracheoles are come in contact with the tissues or cells directly now see here at the end of each tracheoles there are cells but what is the way now at first the atmospheric oxygen okay atmospheric oxygen take entry into their body through the spiracles the first one is the is this one okay and then this atmospheric oxygen through the spiracles take entry into the trachea and then to the tracheoles and from the tracheoles it's come in contact with the cells where it release the oxygen and take the carbon dioxide by the process known as diffusion and after taking the carbon dioxide from each and every cell these tracheoles transport it to the spiracle through the trachea so this is the backward one and then through the spiracle it's again released to the atmosphere so in that way the gaseous transport is happening in the cockroach okay now the next model is the earthworm so uh, all of you know the earthworm is a annelids and it's look like a uh, worm and it's color like pink and on their body surface there are many ring like structures and that's why they are known as the annelids but the 
main feature of this skin is that it's very moist and short and due to their moisture in their skin they can easily diffuse the gases through the skin and another important thing is that just beneath their skin a network of blood vessels is found now see here this is the layer of skin and just beneath it this is the blood vessels red one so it can easily take the oxygen molecules from the atmosphere through diffusion and deliver it to the blood and they release the carbon dioxide by taking it from the blood to the atmosphere easily okay now the next model is an aquatic animal fish okay now it's very common that aquatic animals like fish have their gills for their respiration and all the terrestrial animals have lung for their respiration so let's see uh, the structure of the gill and their position so the gill is present in a chamber at the head of the fish is known as the gill chamber and the gills are red in color and if we see the gills uh, very closely then we can see that there are many parallel tube like structures now these are known as the gill filaments so these are the gill filaments okay so this is the gill filament and this chamber is the gill chamber and this gill chamber is covered by the gill cover or the operculum okay now this gill filaments are surrounded by the blood vessels which are very important for the gaseous exchange so let's see the way so at first the dissolved oxygen which is present in the water medium is take entry into the body of the fish by the mouth so at first the opening of mouth and entry of the dissolved oxygen into the mouth and then this water having the oxygen comes into the gill chamber and it bathing the gills and as the gills are surrounded by numerous blood vessels it can readily exchange the gases that means they take the dissolved oxygen from the water to the blood and release the carbon dioxide from the blood to the water and after the gaseous exchange the water having the carbon dioxide come into the gill chamber and then the operculum the operculum which is closed into the initial stage is opening and through this opercular opercular the water having the carbon dioxide again released to the outside so in that way now if we go to the previous slide so the first one the water goes to the mouth then gill chamber then gaseous exchange and release from the gill chamber by the opening of the operculum so this is the way through which 
द वाटर फ्लोज ओके नाउ द नेक्स्ट वन इज द रेस्पिरेशन इन द प्लांट्स सो प्लांट्स परफॉर्म इट थ्रू टू वेज फर्स्ट वन बाय देयर स्टोमाटर एंड द नेक्स्ट वन इज बाय देयर रूट हेयर्स सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द स्टोमाटर सो ऑल ऑफ यू नो द स्टोमाटर एंड द स्मॉल ओपनिंग्स दैट आर प्रेजेंट एट द लोअर सर्फेस कॉमनली इन टू द लिफ एंड दे आर वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर द गैशियस एक्सचेंज एंड दिस टोमाटो इज इम्पॉर्टेंट इन द बोथ फोटोसिंथेसिस एंड रेस्पिरेशन प्रोसेस ड्यूरिंग डे टाइम ड्यूरिंग फोटोसिंथेसिस दे ओपन फॉर टेकिंग द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड फ्रॉम द एटमोसफेयर एंड रिलीज ऑफ द ऑक्सीजन इन टू द एटमोसफेयर but in the night they actually receive the oxygen from the atmosphere and release the carbon dioxide because they perform the respiration into the night time but how the stomata open or works so let's see now stomata is surrounded by the kidney shaped shells known as the gar cells now these two are the these two are the gar cells now what happen the water molecules take entry inside the gar cells and thus the gar cells swell up and thus it swell up the distance between these two gar cells increases and thus the opening is activated so stomata opens and gaseous exchange occurs but when these water molecule release the gar cells they again shrink and thus they come in closer with the gar cells and the stomata close so in that way by opening and closing of the stomata they actually regulate the gaseous exchange okay now the next is by the root hairs now this is the root hairs and these roots hairs actually penetrate or take uh entry inside the spaces between the soils particles now uh the space between the soil particle is the air space and it fill up with the oxygen molecules so the oxygen molecules take entry into the root here by the diffusion and then release into the release the carbon dioxide into the soil again so in that way they actually perform the respiration so let's see and video respiration is an inevitable process in all living organisms plants take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide during respiration taking place in the night The surfaces of the leaves have tiny pores called the stomata. Stomata are small openings which can close and open easily to aid in exchange of gases. The opening and closure mechanism of stomata is brought about by guard cells around the opening. Oxygen is required to break down starch in the cells. Starch is a form of sugar which gets converted into carbon dioxide and water in the presence of oxygen with release of energy. Roots under the soil also respire in order to obtain oxygen. Oxygen present in the small spaces between soil particles diffuses into the root. 
carbon dioxide diffuses into the soil. The energy released during the process of respiration is utilized for different processes like absorption and transportation of water and mineral nutrients from the soil into the plant. Aquatic plants can obtain the dissolved oxygen present in water. Gaseous exchange in these plants takes place through leaves, stems and roots. Activity Children, let us prove the process of respiration in plants. Take a small conical flask. Add some amount of soil and a small plant. Fill one by fourth of the flask with water. Close it with two hole rubber cork. Insert a funnel made up of glass rod and a dropper rubber. Through another hole, insert a glass tube into the flask. Connect this glass tube to a test tube with lime water. Keep it in complete darkness. After an hour, we shall try to add water through funnel. At one point, we can observe that lime water in the test tube turns milky. This proves the fact that plants take in oxygen from water and release carbon dioxide during the process of respiration. So, through this activity, we can easily understand that the in the night time, they perform the respiration and the way through which they perform the respiration. Okay. Thank you.